Right, we're off. I'm gonna um I've made that circuit. I had a bit of trouble. I don't know if anybody else has had a go, but I couldn't get a three input or gate on the screen, it just wouldn't drop. So what I've done is I've put a four input in and connected two of the inputs together. So that should do the same thing. So okay. there's our circuit, okay. And if I run that, let me check it off against the um, original truth table. When everything is zero, we should get no output. Going down the line, we turn just C on, no output. Just B on, no output. B and C together, no output. Just A on on its own, no output. A and C, first output. A and B, second output and all three third output so the three conditions where we should get an output we are and all the other five conditions where we shouldn't we're not so that circuit would um adequately serve that purpose of that um truth table okay however it's possible to simplify that to a circuit with less gates Okay, so that's something that we're going to take a look at now. There's a number of ways you could do it. You could do some Boolean algebra, but that's, I'm not teaching that. Or we can use something what's called the Carno map. Um, but first of all, before we do that, we need to learn about something a little bit different. Okay, so binary code versus what's called grayscale. And that's named after a Mr. Gray, so it's not the gray color. Um, G R A Y. In order to use Carnot maps to simplify our combinational logic circuits, we need to understand a special way of ordering the possible input combinations. It's called a gray scale. So, what I've done is a, I've done a comparison between two bit binary and two bit gray scale, and three bit binary and three bit gray scale. I've also started to order the inputs where we got least significant bit in the right hand column working towards the most significant bit. So this is the least significant bit, most significant bit. So the letters are backwards. That's along the lines of this represent and starting to represent um, a decimal number. So that first column would represent zero the second column one, the third column two, and the fourth column three, because these is the units column and the twos column. We can't yeah. see your screen. Oh, keep doing that, Nathan, then I. One minute. Stop that share. Now we should be able to share this one. Right. Well, I'll go through that again. So now you can actually see it. We're going to got a comparison here between what's called a binary code here, two bit binary code. Left hand column, so the right hand column is the least significant bit of the binary code. It represents the units or one. The second column represents twos. So as we work down here, we could represent decimal zero, one, two, 
and three without count. Okay. In in the three bit, we've got units, twos, and fours. So it'll represent numbers between zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven using three bits. Yeah. The grayscale is different in that as we go through the code, so here we go on zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one. The grayscale only changes one digit every time we move down. So only one column changes. So the difference is the first column's the same, zero, zero. The second column's changed, just the A column has changed. Then the B column changes to one and the A column back to zero. Only one digit changes at a time in the gray scale. Yeah. So in the three bit binary, we go to one, then we turn A off and turn B on. So we go to two. But in the grayscale, we change one digit in that column, then another digit in that column, then A changes again. But sorry, uh, at B changes, just this one. And then A changes back to zero. Yeah, and then the change is C on. Can you see how one uh, this column is the A changing again, then B changes, and then A changes. So there's only one change of digit on each column. All right. Now we need to we need to use the grayscale with our Carnot maps, but somewhere else where it was. That's used, and I believe it's probably invented because of that. Is on what's called shaft encoders, and I'll just see if I can draw a diagram of one um, to show you what I mean. New page. If we had a um, a circular encoder on a shaft, um, and that's got this the um, and hang on, I'm going to do it slightly different. The straight one. And just like a, a three bit. So, uh, Is the right there? Yeah. Yeah. Three columns. Imagine yeah. something's moving over this and it's got three sensors on it. So the first, this is the first column on our table representing zero, position zero. So we've got a table moving over here. We want it to stop in a, this position one, two, three, four, five six, seven. So this is a linear encoder. If we have the the next column, so this is um, this called I, B and C. So the first thing that happens is A comes on. Yeah. Then the next thing is I stays on and B comes on. The next thing is B stays on and A goes off. Yeah. What we're having is we've only got one change at a time. So as our sensor moves over here, we've got three sensors moving over the top of this sense and position. And we're looking for this position here, number five. That's where we want to stop. Okay. So our grayscale then goes to. Uh, 
this, this, yeah, and then the next one is uh, this, this, and that. If we have two, the, the reason is, if we had two columns, two lines changing at the same time, and the sensors weren't exactly aligned, we'd have one come on before the other, and we'd get a false code. Do you understand that? Whereas if only one item's changing at a time, you've got a definite no, you're moving between four and five, or three and four. If we went here and we changed this next code, erroneously changed two items on the next code. So let's just go to red. And we said the only one we keep on is this one. All right. So we're turning this one off and that one off at the same time. But as we move over, this one goes off early. So we, instead of having on, off, off code, this one's going off early. And so we got on, on, off, on code, which is not the same position, it's erroneous. We won't get that if we only change one digit at a time. I kind of be on this course, but I wanted to give you a practical application of where the where the um, grayscale might be used. And the on, on on um, robots and things, these shaft encoders are circular, and they've got their little squares on them for the sensors to to detect going round. If you if you search um, shaft encoder on the internet, you'll see what they look like okay i'm not going to do that now because that doesn't serve our purpose all right but i want you to have um, a, a, an understanding of the uh, reason why you might do that okay what i'm going to do now is look at what's something called carno map so new page uh, uh. Oh, yeah. Well, now if we keep it really simple to start with, and we say we're gonna we're gonna truth table, um. <laughs> A truth get a table for an OR gate. Yeah. So truth table. For an OR gate. Right. Now, that would be, so if we've got two inputs, B and A, and an output Q. We'd have two zeros, zero one, one zero, and one one. Yeah, and our outputs would be not one one one. Okay, you all understand that that is a truth table for an OR gate. All right. Now, if we draw a card back for that. K A R N A U G H map that I would look something like this. So we've got B across the top that can be either um, zero or one. And we've got A down the side that can also be. 
zero or one. So we've got a two by two Carnot map. That's the simplest that you can have. All right. Now in uh, this box, what is the output condition? Q. We're saying in here, in this one here, we've got that the output condition when A is off and B is off. That is a zero. Yeah. In this column, this one, is when A is off and B is on, which is one. And then um, <clears throat> when the other, uh, this column is when A is on and B is off. A on, B off, it's this one here, so that's a one as well. And the last column is when they're both on. So we end up with a Carno map. Like so. Yeah. Uh, now, yeah. this, uh, I'm going to go another colour, green. This one represents, so if we looked at this one here, that represents um, not A and B. We also want a one when we've got A and not B. And we also want a one when we've got A and B. So we could go down the lines of saying we can build an AND gate if we do this. A and not B or a and B, or not A and B. We made it at this stage much more than it needs to be. Okay? But here comes the trick. So, new page, just redraw that Carnot map. B, O, 1. I rule one. We had a zero in there and ones in all the others. What the Carnot map allows us to do is it allows us to group together either ones or zeros. We're going to concentrate on grouping together ones at this stage. So I can simplify this expression that we had on the previous page by saying We've got a group of two. We have to group them in either twos, fours, or eights. So we can group those together and call that group one. Yeah. And we can group these two together. So we can use the same one twice. We can group that together and call that group two. Okay. All follow that so far? Oh yeah. Yeah. Now in this group one here, if we look to the left, A can be either zero or one. Yeah. So A doesn't matter in that column, but B doesn't change. We have to have B. So that one is equal to just B. We look at the two values there and there, two columns. A changes from zero to one. So we got one whether we have A or not, as long as we've got B. 
because that's one. And then across here, we must have A, but B changes from zero to one. So we don't bother about it. So that one equals just A. Therefore, Q, the full expression, is OR and these two together, A or B, the OR gate we started with in the first place. So that's, that's a very simple example, but the power will become more obvious when we look at our three input problem that we were working on earlier, because that will help to simplify um, that circuit down considerably. Okay. So that's that's our first look at Carnell maps. Okay. Right. I'm going to move on now, if everyone's happy, and start to look at this um, problem with three inputs. So you can look at a three input. Um, Carnot map. Yeah. So to do that, we need, remember what we had before, we had three expressions down here, I and not B and C. Here we had I and B and not C. And here we had I and B and C, and we had to or all those together to make the full expression. Carnot map this time has IB in the left hand column that can go O, O, O1. This must be grayscale. So 1, 1, 1, O. Yeah. And then in here, we have the C column. which can be zero or one. Yeah, so now we've got an eight square Cardo map. Okay, yeah. Everyone happy with that so far? Yeah. And what we've got to do is carefully transfer the values from the truth table to the Cardo map. Where we got a one, we put a one in, in the output, and where we got a zero, we put a zero in the box. So just change the color right here. So we start at the top. I and B are zero, and C is zero. We want a zero. I and B zero, and C is one. I put a zero. I zero, B one, I put zero. Sorry, I zero, B one, C zero, I put zero. I zero, B one, C one, this column, zero. So that's a good start. And then go a bit further down the line. So when we go one, one, this is where we've got to watch out with the grayscale because we're down here. One, one, zero is a one. And one, one, one is also a one. And then we go back up here to one, zero, zero is a zero. And one, zero, one is a one. Yep, yeah. all happy. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Right. Now we start. Now what we do is we look for our blocks of two, four, or eight in the Carno map. So what we can make here are two blocks of two. Got one there. Call that one. 
and we've got one here. We could call that two. Yep. So if we can satisfy those two blocks, we can satisfy this truth table. Yeah. Now if we look at number one, across there, C changes from zero to O. So C doesn't matter, but we must have both A and B. One of, in that column, in this column here, so we're looking at the horizontal linked two ones. C doesn't matter, so our number one is C doesn't matter, but we must have I and B. Yep. And then if we look at column, the, the pair that are labeled number two, in that one, B changes from one to zero, but C is always one and I is always one. So you must have I and C. Yep. And then finally, you need to all those together. So we can say it's I and B or I and C. So we've gone from three expressions over here to two expressions here. And we can do some like terms. We've got I in that term and I in that term. So we can bring that outside some brackets and say it's I and B or C. But even if we went with just this, we've moved one of the gates, removed one of the gates from our um, truth table. But if we go with I and B or C, what would our circuit look like? A and brackets B or C. B or C. And I. So this is B or C. That's A. So that Q must be I and B or C. In other words, we've reduced that this circuit here, that circuit there, with three three input and gates and a three input OR gate to one OR gate, one AND gate, using the Carnot map. Would you say that's powerful or not? Anyone? Yeah, uh, it looks it looks pretty powerful to me. Yeah, a little tricky to start with. Got to be careful transferring them values over to make sure you remember that the Carnot map um, situation here. This this is in this is these are in grayscale, so you must remember that. Okay. Um, there are there are other tricks that you'll you. We may find a later on we'll probably look at we get four in a block, which reduces it even further. And also, just as an example, um, if you're doing here and put a new page in, if your Carnot map um, C01 I B 
0001110, like so. If you have, um, change color. If you have a one in here and a one in the bottom, you can link them two together. It's like a rolling um, thing. Imagine it curled up. You can um, take them like so. Color red. That and this as a group. We could call that group one. Yeah. And if we look at that, we must have um, C, but between there and there, I changes from O to one. So it's not, it's C and not B. That would represent. So you could also pick pairs up across from top to bottom. And if you've got four ones in there, you can group all those four together. And in that case, I and B don't matter, but B, I and but C must be off. That's not C. That group of four. All right. So let's have a look at something that's more like um, an engineering problem that you might come across where you could build a combinational circuit for. And have a look at a boiler system example. Yeah, it's got um, three inputs, Q0, if you turn Q0 on, you'll turn the boiler and the pump on. And then Q1, if you have that input, you'll turn on a hot water valve. And if you have Q2 turned on, you'll have the heating valve on and the water will go around the radiators. And then we've got four inputs. Okay, I is heating on, B is hot water on, C is the uh, room stat for the heating, and D is the water stat. Okay, so you'd use them to say hot water needs heating up, turn the boiler on, open a valve for the hot water. As long as the hot water switch down here is turned on. Same with the um, the, the room heating, if the room heating switches on and the thermostat turns on, calls for water to the radiator, we'll switch the boiler on if it's not already running for hot water and open the heating valve. So this is fairly simple, no kind of interlocks or safety measure um, boiler heating system with four inputs and um, three outputs. All right. Now, there's a list of the um, outputs and the inputs, All right? So we need to try and describe the operation for each of the outputs. So description of operation. Yeah. Q0, boiler, and pump. Yeah. We try, try, I was trying to do this in words. If Heating on, uh, if, if um, heating on, that's uh, 
I. And um, and uh, room stat on that is uh, C. Or if hot water on, which is B, I think. Yeah. And uh, tank stat. On. D. So the boiler Q will come on if either the heating and the room stack turn on or if the hot water and the tank stack turn on. Yeah. So what we've got here is um, a Boolean expression. Q0 is equal to, and then we got I and C, I being the heating on, C being the room thermostat, and then all of that with um, B and D, which is the hot water on and the tank stat on. So that is the expression for Q0, the boiler and the pump. Okay. Then Q1, which is the hot water valve. If hot water, which is uh, B on as B and um, tank stack. which is B on then turn on HW valve. So again we can write um, the Boolean expression for that. Q1 is equal to um, B and D, simply. Yeah. And then lastly, Q2, heating valve, heating valve operation. If heating on as input A and room stat on as C turn heating valve on. So again, we've got 
expression for Q2, that is A and C. Yep. So, in your um, notes, have you got um, anything in these columns here? Because I thought I sent yours empty. Yeah, they're filled in. They're empty. They're filled in, are they? Yeah. Yeah. So we'll we'll take a look at that now. We've got um, the truth table for the. Um, boiler pump problem, right? So our expression for um, QO was A and C or B and D. So we're looking down this column now. I'm gonna check that, we've got, that I've got it right. So we need to have both either I and C on together or B and D on together. So that's, that's, that one's just changed color. That one's right. Anywhere, in fact, anywhere we got I and C on, just rub that green out for a minute. Anywhere we've got I and C on, or we've got B and D on, we should have a one. So we'll check that first. Yeah, so I and C, I's on there, no, yeah. Yeah. not there. Here, we've got I and C, we've got a one. And there, and there, not there, it's wrong. But that might be in there because of the, um, yeah, we've got a B and, D, uh, B and D in there. And here, we've got B and D as well. So they're all right. Yeah. And here we've got B and D, and here we've got B and D, and all the others are zeros. Yeah. So that truth table for the the column for Q zero, the boiler and pump is correct. Now our expression for Q one. was B and D. So Q1 equals B and D. So in this column here, only turn on, we've got B and D on together. So that's correct, correct, correct. 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 I don't, everywhere down to here can go because there's no D's. That's zero. That's zero. There we got B and D together, so that's right. And there. Not there, so that's right. Not there. We have there we have there. So that column is correct. And then lastly, Q2 was I and C. Yeah. So anywhere where C is zero, we got an O. 
So let's check that. Two, three, four. And this four. One, two, three, four. Anywhere where I is zero, top two. We're looking for ones where we got I and C. So it's there. That one's correct. I and C, that one's correct. That one's correct. So is that one. And so is that one. Yeah. So on the truth tables, um, for the three uh, different outputs are correct. Now, what we have to do to, um, if we take uh, one of those situations for a minute and said, we're going to do separate expressions for each one so let's just take this Q2 one, because that's on the end. This one in here would be, we'd have to have C on, not B, not D, and A. So that would be A, not B, C, and not D. Every one that we had here, we'd have a four input expression to write, and then we'd have to add or, or those one, two, three, four, four input expressions together just to make the logic circuit for that Q2 heat valve. Yeah. And then we'd have to do the same for the Q1 hot wall valve. Again, we'd have one, two, three, four expressions to write and all together. All of them would have four inputs in them. And then the boiler and pump, we'd have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven expressions to write and all, all them together. And all of them would involve all four inputs. If we went that long, hard laborious route okay which i'm not going to do i might add yeah what we need to do is do a carnal map for each of these three outputs okay so i think what i'd like you to do is how many people have we got here today it's just um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Right. On your next three pages, you've got Carno, uh, uh, an empty Carno map for Q0. Yeah. I'll give that to. Um, Taylor and Jake, all right. And then on the next page, you've got an empty Cardo map for Q1. We can give that to Connor and Nathan, all right. And then Dom and Maka can have the Cardo map for Q2 heating valve. So in each case, follow the correct um, column here either this one, this one, or this one, for the outputs according to the inputs A, B, C, and D over here. All right, watch out for the grayscale. So just to start someone off on this one, we're looking at the first column, zero, zero for D and C, it's there, zero, zero for B and A. And if we're looking in the last column for Q2, We've got to put in zero in that box. 
when it goes zero, 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 one, we also want a zero. So you need to fill in every box on that Carnot map with either a zero or a one. All right? So I'll give you five minutes to have a go at that, and then we'll try and tie them all together at the end and look at how we can work out a simplified expression. But see if you can fill up those Carnot maps. And I'll do mine and cover them up and we'll see whether you've got the same answer. All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna stop sharing that now. I'm assuming that you've got um that situation in Which, hand. Yeah. If you've got the hand actually yeah. macro myself there. The last one. The this the last one, the one I've started, the Q2. Yeah. So you've got the oh, Q2. Right. Nathan and Connor, the Q1. Jake and Taylor, the Q0. All right. What I'm interested in at the moment is having the ones and zeros put into the Carnot map. Mac, give me a little message, boy. All right. All right. I think Mac and myself are on for something. All right. Zero, zero, one. <laughs> yeah, okay. I ain't done my own yet. them back on. So what we've got, I hope everyone else is listening to, we've got a batch in the corner here of four ones. We can link all of them together as a group. So I use my green pen. We can link that batch of four all together. We've only got one group. 
Yeah. All right with that, Nathan? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. where we would have had one expression, uh, where I had sorry four expressions for this output, we can get away with one. Yeah. If we look at the two columns here and here, we can see that um, A changes from one to zero, so A doesn't matter, but B is on in both of them. So we must have B. Yeah. And then if we look in the two rows, top and bottom, D is always on, but C doesn't matter because it can be either one or zero. So that expression for that box is B or D. Yep. So we yep. can say we can say that your Q1 is equal to B or D. Sorry, B and D. You must have both B and D. But A and C are of no concern. Yep. All right. Yep. Okay, right. I'll go on to Dom and Macca now. Have you got your answer in front of you, Dom and Macca? You've done the... Um, Q2, didn't you? We uh, we went on to Q2, yeah. Yeah, right. Oh. Is that what you've got? Four ones in the middle? And then yeah. you've got one missing, a zero. Yeah. 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 Is that what you got, yeah? Micah, did you get it? Yeah. Right, so again, we've got four ones we can link together. And we put all the ones in one group. Yeah. And if we look at that in the two columns here, B uh. changes from zero to one, so it doesn't matter. But A is on both times, so we must have A. And if we look in the two um, rows, we're changing, D is changing from zero to one, so it doesn't matter. But C must be on. Yeah. So we've got Q2 is equal to A and C. So before that, we would have had one, two, three, four. We've got four ones. We'd have had four separate, four input expressions for that out, output. We've reduced it down to one with two inputs. Okay. Right, Jake, are you there and are you ready? Yeah, I'm here, but I ain't ready. You. <laughs> What about your oppo then? Has he done it? Taylor, have you done it? Hello, Michael. Yeah, have you had, have you attempted to fill in this Carno map? We Taylor? we have, yes. Right. I'm now gonna put mine up and okay. see if that's what you've got. Yeah, that's that's very similar to what me and Jake have. Are you sure? Sort of, yeah. Okay. So you've got four ones right in the middle. And yeah. also four ones down in the bottom right. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So if we look at grouping here, we can group a four down in the bottom right. We can also group this four in the middle there. So we got a one and a two. Looking at the number one box between these two columns, yeah, I is changing, but B is, has to be there. So I must must have B. 
and then if we look at the two rows, C is staying the same, but D is changing, so this must be B or C. Something don't ring me a bell about that somewhere. Just going to look back at this one. No, nope, not that one, that one. As I will see, if that's the same, it must be I or C, I or C as yeah, well. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Nearly made a boo boo there. I or C. So, <clears throat> and then two in the two columns. I is changing, but B isn't. So we must have B. Yeah. Coming off your phone. Oh, we must have what? D. Some bloke talking. Oh, it's Q, zero is equal to I and C. Thanks for four. Oh. B <laughs> and D. Yeah. So Q, zero, where we would have had to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven ones we got seven four input expressions we have brought that down to two two input expressions yep oh yeah so what we need to do now is take them and put them into um circuits for each one of the outputs. So we need a circuit for Q1, a circuit for Q2, and a circuit for Q0 using the relevant gates. Okay, so same teams, draw your circuit. Okay, I'll do the same thing and we'll see if they're the same. All right. On it. Order. You all got everything you want from the from the whiteboard. Everything and more. Yeah, so you're drawing a logic circuit for your output, either Q1, Q0 or Q2. Yeah. Uh -huh.
we'll just sum that up. Um, up here we've got the I and C into an AND gate, give us A and C, B and D, all all together to give the Q0 output. The Q1 output is just B and D and together. And the Q2 output is A and C and together. But there's a further trick up here indicated by the red lines that in the in the process and for the Q0 output, you've already anded A and C together and B and D together. So those two outputs, Q1 and Q2, could be taken directly off those lines and save another two AND gates. All right. So I think that will do us for this week, and I'll see you for maths again next Tuesday morning at 8.30. Have a nice be there Or be square. All right. See you later. Yeah. See Bye. you. See you, boys.